Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Cheesy Crackers. That's right, and why would we make our own crackers when you could buy a whole box at the store for just a couple bucks? Well, besides tasting way better, looking amazing, and not having 64 ingredients you can't spell or pronounce, there really isn't a good reason. But you know what? We've never let that stop us before. So let me show you how to do this. Step one, you're going to take a mixing bowl with a little bit of room temperature butter in it. All right, it shouldn't be so soft that it's melting, but you do want it very pliable. And then to that, we're going to add some sharp cheddar cheese. And you will notice I am using the orange variety. I think for appearances, that's going to give the cracker a much cooler look, a much cheesier appearance. And if you're worried there's some kind of dangerous artificial coloring in there, there's not. Relax. All right, that color comes from something called the annatto seed. It's completely natural, completely safe, nothing to worry about. In other words, it's annatto a problem. And then after we've grated in our sharp cheddar, I'm also going to use some Parmesan. And by the way, this is why volume measurements for cheese really don't work. This is just one ounce of Parmesan compared to three ounces of cheddar, yet it takes up almost the same volume because of how it grates. And that's kind of a big point. I think I'll discuss that in the blog post. But anyway, you can use all cheddar. I'm using three parts cheddar to one part Parmesan here. And once our cheese is in, we're going to season this up a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of paprika. We'll also give it a few shakes of cayenne and a nice pinch of salt. And at that point, we're going to take the back of a spatula and we're going to mash that, mush that, smear that, and smash that until we basically have what's a cheese butter. All right, so just spatulate that until you have something that looks exactly like this. And at that point, we're going to add in our flour. And a very critical here, we got to switch to a fork. And you're going to get in there with your fork and you're going to work that flour into that butter cheese mixture until we have a very crummy mixture. So I want you to give this a thorough and proper forking. Just keep pressing the flour into the butter with the back of the fork, while at the same time breaking up those clumps with the tips of the tines of the fork. Oh yeah, not just the tines, the tips of the tines. And after a few minutes of forking in earnest, you should have a nice crummy mixture that looks like this. And at this point, for some reason, I felt the need to feel it with my fingertips for a few seconds. It felt pretty good. And once we have it to this stage, the last and most critical step, the sprinkling in of one tablespoon of very cold water, Tap water's fine. Ice water might be even better. And you're going to drip that in. And we're going to go back to the spatula. And we're going to start mixing that together until it just starts to clump together. It starts to come together in some kind of dough-like substance. And for whatever reason, if it's too dry and it doesn't come together for you, just add a couple more drips of water. It's fine. And as soon as that happens, switch to your hands and just press that together into a lump. I generally find it easier at this point just to dump it right onto your work surface. All right, we don't really want to knead it. We just want to press it all together. All right, and as you can see, it's very soft, very pliable, but it's not sticky. All right, so press it, form it, and pat it down into a disc-like object. And once you've done that, we're going to wrap that in plastic. And I think it's a good idea to refrigerate this for about 30 minutes. That butter will firm up a little bit. It'll make it a little easier to roll out and work. All right, technically, that is optional. I have made these right away. It does work. But like I said, it's a little easier. So I chilled mine for 30 minutes, after which we're going to roll this out on a well-floured surface. All right, so dust your board or your countertop, and we're going to attempt to roll that out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And of course, if you need to, go ahead and dust a little more flour along the way. So here I started my rolling and decided I needed a little more flour. But anyway, somehow, some way, I want you to roll that out until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Do not worry at all about shape. So it doesn't matter if you get a circle or an oval or a square or a parallelogram. It's totally going to work because the next step is simply cutting out strips that are approximately the same width, and I'm saying approximately because I didn't cut these exactly perfectly even. But that's fine. You've heard me say it before. Nobody likes a perfectionist in the kitchen. They're annoying. And yes, all those scrap pieces, you can re-roll that and cut some more. Totally works. And then, of course, once we've cut those in strips, just turn the cutter and cut across to make little rectangles or squares. And again, the thickness is key. The exact shape and size, not a big deal. And you'll notice once these are done, the ones that were a little smaller cooked exactly the same as the ones that were a little bigger. So please don't stress. Ever. And then once we have all those cut out, we need to dock them. And no, I don't mean tie them up next to a pier. By docking, I mean punch little holes in it with the back of a bamboo skewer. And I want you to put five in each one. And there's a very scientific reason for that. Four is not enough. Six, too many. And if you don't care about exact numbers, you can just dock that whole piece of dough before you cut these squares out. That is quicker. But I have that thing where every one of my crackers has to have the exact same number of holes, or I won't be able to sleep. I think that's probably a little touch of the OCD. Although in my case, it's actually OG OCD. But still, I'm going to put exactly five holes in each one. And once that dough is cut and docked, we're going to transfer that onto our baking sheet. 
I'm not gonna use my silk pad here. I'm gonna use regular foil that I very lightly grease with vegetable oil, just a couple drops. Just rub it in with your fingertips. You shouldn't really even be able to see the oil. Just a very light coating. These crackers have plenty of butter and cheese in them, so they shouldn't stick. We're gonna place those down, kind of line them up evenly. And at that point, they're ready to go in a preheated 375 degree oven for 15 minutes or until they're beautifully browned and crispy. All right, you roll them thinner, it might be 13 minutes. You roll them a little thicker, it might be 17. So you're in charge here, only you can answer the question, what's cracker lacking? And then very important, do not try to peel these off the foil when they first come out of the oven. They will be stuck when they're really hot, but if you wait just a couple minutes, like three minutes, they will cool slightly, they will contract a little bit, and they will completely release from that foil, and they will look like that. And I know you wanna try one, but don't. They're no good until they cool down. But once they are cooled, they're gonna get crispy, they're gonna get crunchy, and they're gonna sound like this. So the texture is just amazing. I mean, look at that flakiness. And the taste, even better. Just a really big, bold cheese flavor. And like I said, just vastly superior to anything you're gonna get in the store. And I don't have to tell you, this just begs to be adapted. You can change up the cheeses, change up the spices, maybe put some different kind of chili powders in, some curry powder, things like fresh herbs, maybe a little rosemary would be beautiful. So really a fun thing to play around with. So I really do hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.